The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman sitting in. Oh, the, the sound just faded. I hope everything's okay. Let me just check with my engineer. Uh, yes, they can hear me fine. That's good. Okay. So we're looking at uh, this is Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. My, uh, Larry's voice is still uh, not good. Hopefully it'll be better by tomorrow. Uh, meantime, back at the ranch, we're looking at the Dow. Let me just go to this right now. We're looking at the Dow. is uh, up 90 points at 31,527. It did skyrocket today, extending this leg, being the Chapman wave. Just for those of you new to my work, I look at, uh, I try to identify the lowest low bar and uh, account every successively higher bar all the way from A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Those are the peaks, the higher peaks. There's no H ever in the Chapman wave methodology, but what you want to see is an upgrade from a buy signal to a buy mode. We now have a buy mode designation in the Dow, not yet on the S&P. And that implies that there should be at least four higher peaks going to a peak D before this is done. It can go higher, but D is the fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. So just keep that in mind. Then the pattern we're looking at here is this deep cup or V-shaped pattern that says from the left side to the right side, so far we've done a good match to the, to the candle uh, that was just tumbling down around about the 12th of, Je of, of June. And uh, now we've come back to that in the same look now number of bars. One, two, three, four, five, six to the downside. One, two, three, four, five to the six to the upside. We haven't taken out the high of this bar, and that's going to be very important. Most, most significant at this particular stage is that using the techniques that I have. Remember, you're looking at a chart on the left. This is the daily. This is the weekly. This is the monthly. You're looking at stuff that you'll never see on, on Larry's uh, um uh, charts. He has different methodology. We all here at TFNN use our own uh, particular bias or te te uh, yeah, technical tools. But most importantly, we try to come to the same conclusion. And the conclusion in this particular instance is that using, in my case, the nine period is still pink. It's not above the 14 period. Moving average is going to work very hard. It has to go even higher. It has to go into the 32,150 area or more to see this nine period cross positive over the over the black line to change to green. That'll be a big deal. And, the, uh, and also the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence has turned very nicely. That shows you that the histogram, the 0% line has flipped to positive. I like that very much. Look at the nice move you can get to the upside when that green line, especially when the aperture between the distance between the slow moving average, the 26 period exponential moving average, and the um, nine period differential, which is made up of the 12, it's, it's a combination, and it comes to, they call it the nine period differential that gives you the 0% line below is negative above is positive and the stochastic is only at 43 percent i would like to see it higher than that and i suspect that we are looking at digestive phase that could go into tomorrow so that we actually get a peak b in the dow because there's a lower high below the 31,855 level you get a peak a it's only at an a in the uh, s p which is now down 265 at uh, 380 380 38.98. It was actually at 39.45 this morning. So these are big moves we're beginning to see. And you can see the MACD's turned positive. The 9 is still way under the 14. And I'm going to give it room to say that I suspect that we will get that positive cross at some point, And that's going to be important. Stochastic at 42%. I love over 80%. Holding above 80% is good. Holding above 90%. Uh, every textbook says the stochastic above 80% is overbought. I said, are you kidding? You want it to be in that area. That's where the market, that's where whatever you're following will hold price. And under 20%, they say is oversold. And I say, no, under 20% is, is negative. If you're short, you want it to stay under 20%. Look what happened when it crossed over 20%. That's when you got that big gap up move three days ago. So those are my, my 
my my analysis of the some of the technicals that 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 refine a little bit the standard um, um, interpretations. So that's the Q. Now that's the S and P. Now the QQQ, the NDX one hundred is probably making a peak A. It could not take out yesterday's high, even with that fabulous opening surge to the upside at about 9.30. 295.65 was the high today. It's now at 290.34. There's a whole area of 287 with the 9 and 14 period moving averages. Look at this. The pink is getting closer and closer to, to changing to green by crossing positive. That would be a big deal. And what we're looking at here is the MACD is good. Stochastic actually is better than the others. It's at 48%. So I'm suggesting to you that the NASDAQ 100 Invesco QQQ Trust Series actually has the potential to do very well in this environment. And I'm going to include something that I was asked about a, a little earlier. Could I do? Could I show the SMHs? Well, the SMHs, the semiconductors, they are lagging. They okay? They're doing okay, but they are really lagging. And that tells me that the, in the big picture, you remember I like to look at semiconductor chips as the oil of the 21st century, uh, all the way from the late 1800s, what was standard oil, what was that, 1906 when the antitrust thing uh, came about. So the entire 1900s and um, beginning of the 20, 20, uh, the 2000s, oil has just been the premature, that's been the, the most important economic aspect uh, to do with all, all countries, all industries, etc. It's 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 what kept economies going. Yes, there, there's another side to it. I don't want to talk about the pollution. I'm talking about the, 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 the actual economic aspect that allows people to drive, to do whatever it is, to heat their houses, etc. However, from the, from the 19, you can say the 1950s, 60s, that's when uh, you know, semiconductors uh, became very important. But really from the 1980s, 1990s, our new oil that is integral to everything that we do in the economy are the semiconductor chips. And this is saying there is still a problem. And I'm suspecting that there'll be a phase where um, everything comes together and all of a sudden the economy starts to improve because the chips are, uh, I can imagine how many fabs are being uh, fabricated, etc. cetera. Um, when it finally comes on, I wouldn't be surprised in 2023, we actually see a glut of chips. I mean, that's just typical of any, every industry, whether it's, it doesn't matter finance, uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Eventually, you get a glut. So we'll see what happens there. But that, that's not today, and that's not this week or next week, just in the future. In the meantime, back at the ranch, I wanted to show you something gold. Uh, gold has just been in this pattern. Uh, look, there's the H. Oh, I didn't show that. So for those of you who are new to my work, let me just show you this. I look at three basic patterns. These are my core patterns. Straight up, straight down. Cup formation, arch formation, a combination of one and three or one and two. This is one and three, and it's red because if in the H pattern, if you rally to a peak A or a peak B and then you fail, take out the left side low, you can go a lot lower. We saw that a number of times today. And on the right side is the Y, the reverse Y pattern, because if you go to the left side high, you make your cup formation. If you break above it, that's really important. So basically three patterns, and the, the arch could be, uh, an inverted V and the cup could be a V pad, but it's basically from one point up and then back to the point. Well, we did that. Look, gold went from this low in the continuous contract below 1800, spirals up to the 1880s at a peak E, makes an arch formation, doesn't take out the left side low. Instead, the magnetic finds support, stochastic finds support, not the unbalanced volume, because what happens is it bounces and makes a smaller arch. So the lowercase h can go to a lowercase m. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Projects. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, yes, hi everyone. We're back, and uh, Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour of Larry Pesavento. I had a question about DQ, and DQ is I'd never seen this before. Deco, and of course there aren't many uh, times you ever see a Q not followed by a U. D A Q O, New Energy Core is a Chinese company engaged. Oh my, engaged in the manufacture of monocrystalline silicone monosi and polysilicone polysi primarily for use in solar photovoltaic systems. The company operates a monocyte and polycyte manufacturing facility located in Shizhou, uh, uh, Xin, uh, Xinjiang province, China. Um, okay, well, look at this. It soars from under $40 to 70 where it hit this morning. It's around number 74, 74.10 uh, 74 high, 69.13 uh, low. It's at 70.06 right now. Made a beautiful cup formation. I love these cup formations. Uh, let me just show you something else here. Look, if you're looking at the Chapman Wave methodology, I go from the left side to the right side. I go to this candle right here, the low candle. So my plumb line is the low right there. I don't want to draw a big um, uh, vertical line just to this particular note there. And not a note, this particular candle, the low, the low that was made the week of at 32.20, the week of the 18th of March. And now I close it up there. And then I just go right side, click, new parallel, change it to green. And it says that by, here we are, by the um, 5th of, by the end of July, beginning of August, there should be a move that takes you to uh, the high of the 20, week of the 28th of October 2021 of 81.10. It's at 70 right now. Then what I do, I use some of my techniques here. I'm going to use this one because it's also a visual basis, purely on a technical basis. I shoot you one particular point. But I say, you know, we've already gotten this far. You can't ignore what's happened. So take that particular point, draw it up, and it gives you just a beautiful trend line that's hit one, two, three, four, five times. And this is the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line, green. There it is, green. 
and I'll dash it in right there, dash, dash, dash. Great. And it says we just hit resistance right now as we were speaking today. Um, and that could pull back. But if the MACD is so strong, the stochastic is a little, uh, not a little, it's quite a lot overbought. But the stochastic is flattened the weekly chart at 84%. That is fabulous action. That's what you want to see. In the daily, it's at 84% and flat. Flat is good. Flat and holding in the 80%, 85%, 90%. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see it pop up and fail. Look what happened when it popped up and failed at that high that was made just after the high that was made in October of 2021. The price tumbled from 80 down to the 32 level, more than cut in half. So this is important, and that says to me, keep it in mind, even though it's a Chinese company, and I say, hey, we've got enough problems. Why do you want to go to China for your problems? Um, I'm just saying, hey, uh, that's the way we're looking at it. It's in leg D already, and it's in a buy mode in the weekly chart. So I'm going to put D, Q at 72.81 by, uh, uh, let's just call it eight, uh, 7.31. Are there 31 days in July? I think there are. Yep. No, there are 30 days in July. Oops, mistake. 30 days in July. Got it. Okay. So I hope that helps you in this key support now in the 63 area. It's a, sorry, 65 to 63. If this is a peak, you remember I've got an alternate count here. And the reason is that um, it's holding so strong because the because it slipped under the 14-period moving average, but the 9-period didn't cross under it, I still have to consider it's in a buy mode. It remains in a buy mode. And that's a plus, and that's a plus, and that's a question. Is it a peak F by having a sharp pullback? If it goes under 62 in this phase without taking out today's high of 74.10, by Friday or Monday, that says it's probably a peak F and it's going to have a timeout. But if it holds steady and it makes a new recovery high in the next two, three days, I think it's going even higher. It could get there even sooner to the left side. High. Yes, it's acting well. DQ is a symbol, 70.18. question I had here was, um, so could I go through these different things? So first of all, heating oil, heating, don't type it on the chart. That's a plus sign. That's good. Okay, there we go. Heating oil. We're doing commodities now, so let's go to the oil sector. We've got heating oil trading, had a peak E in the Chapman wave. It's been two days underneath the 14 period exponential moving average. Peak D in the weekly chart with two doji candles. There's this long legged doji uh, three weeks ago, a, side, a Chapman wave silent doji. What's the Chapman wave silent doji? I had a webinar on it. If you sign up, if you become a, a subscriber to my opening call, remember we've got a fantastic deal going on right now. You get a, you get, what is it, 40%? You get a huge discount. You get Tiger Dollars. But anyway, I have a, I have about 10, 11 webinars there. I go through all these different things. I had a webinar based on the silent doji at some point. And that's a, a doji that doesn't show up if you do a scan of dojis. It's the doji either the day before a high or the day after a high. And that's just a clue or a, a day after or before a low. And that's just a clue to say, hey, be real careful. Why? Because within the context of um, within the context of a doji being an indecisive candle, a candle that says I'm either I'm not going up, I'm not going down. I'm just stuck at this particular point. What happens on the following bar? I could be a halfway marker. Look at heating oil; it was a halfway marker right there, and not exactly a halfway, but a continuation pattern. Uh, the the day of the third of June in the continuous contract of heating oil. Again, it had a tiny little doji on the eighth continual. Uh, moving to the upside, and then it reversed in the uh, in the daily and had a sign in doji the following session after the high. So I'm putting I'm saying this is now a sell signal. I haven't got I need to wait a day or two to see if it's got a sell mode designation. But I'm starting off saying sell signal in the daily. Nothing in the weekly. It's still a fantastic looking chart in the weekly chart. MACD and stochastic are very good. Stochastic's at 89 percent. That is just great. So it's the short term that says heating oil could pull back. This is the summer after all. And a leg E in the monthly chart. So we'll see. The weekly will change if there's a close below. It's at three at 4.05 in the continuous contract. The heating oil um, weekly will change. Be positive if there's a push over 4.52. And if there's a close on a weekly basis, uh, the weekly will be positive 
even if inch a week there's a push above that. A close above 4.53 in the next two weeks would be very positive. But in the meantime, uh, I suspect that the uh, uh, 3.89 area is going to be tested. And if that's taken out, watch 3.60. A close in the next two weeks under 3.60 says now the weekly chart has gone to a sell signal with the Dow with the, with the daily chart being in a sell mode. And the reason is this monthly chart looks spectacular, but the unbalanced volume says, whoo, it's ready for a little bit of a breather. So heating oil seasonally as well would say, okay, it's ready for a bit of a pullback. Natural gas, natural gas made a peak D in the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. See these two lines right here? Look at that, nice technique. And there's that uh, 135 pattern that Larry likes to talk about. It's not exactly because it's a little lopsided. But look at that. It went into that range and failed to peak deep. And now back to the 95 area has been If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Now, folks, what we're looking at here is, remember that peak D in the 10-minute E-mini chart? Now, what we've done is a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. And that's one of the one of the techniques that I look at in this in this rectangle formation. Um, and you don't know when, the, when that's going to occur. But look what happened. You see, when the 9 went under the 14 right there on this bar, that was at 10.30. And it's still pick and it's expanded. And right now, what you're looking at is let me just do this. I'll just show you a uh, new parallel. Let's make a new parallel. And I normally, I'm very conservative when it comes to the extension to the downside. I don't do this right away. I don't say, oh, one to one to the downside. I usually try to find 
a move down that says, okay, go to your next uh, moving average or a candle. There's a little doji candle. Go to the top of the candle. If it takes out that low, yep, uh, that extension low, yep, you got to be careful. And then just keep moving it down until you get to the point where it's it looks like it's trying to find support. Right here on the... Um, 10-minute uh, chart says, okay, now look at your one-minute chart. I can go to one, two, five-minute chart. doesn't matter. But this is where you would expect that the sto stochastic is flattening out. Yes, it's at 6% under the uh, fifteen under the 10% range in the single digits. This is where if it flattens out, it's not going to do anything. It has to make a V-shaped recovery like that. Look, V-shaped recovery. Then you get a bit of a bounce. But most importantly, you've got this pattern going from a cup formation to an arch, a sine wave uh, just up and down, up and down. This is exactly where you would expect some kind of a relief to the upside. But until you get the pink changing back to green above the four, the uh, nine above the fourteen, um, I, I don't think it's going to be successful. So I always have to wait a little bit for proof of of entry point, and so we'll leave it at that. In the meantime, it's really important that the three eight seven zero level, it's a three eight seven six right now, holds on any pullback from here. We had such that Friday extension to the upside, that double of the noontime uh, price, and then yesterday going even higher intraday and then pulling back, and then today going, going even higher. We are at least on the Dow 150 to 280 points over bought. So you can see something like that as a give back. So here's NG, which is natural gas. So you remember this pattern uh, when I, I talk about an overlapping wave? This hasn't quite succeeded in doing it because this is a monthly chart. You see all these notations? This is a chap wave notation. This is a continuous ca contract of natural gas. Natural gas, uh, all the continuous contracts get smoothed out in price. Therefore, my chap wave notation, because every single letter that you ever see on my charts, my th thousands and thousands of charts is hand notated by me. I, I Yes, it can be done automatically, but you will, you, yeah. I haven't yet found a program that would uh, uh, avert having one slight, um, slight discrepancy in the waveform that becomes a very important nuance to me, become a major nuance in, in a program. I just, I haven't found it yet. Maybe I haven't, I, I hope later in this year to take some time to try to figure it out. But this is a Chapman wave, um, overlapping wave that says, if underneath the previous high, you take out in a shorter time frame the cup formation, the previous high, and it's only like at a B, you should go to a C and even a D when it went screaming up to a C in the natural gas continuous contract, but it's already given back above the left side high this is November of 2018, the high of 7.164. So it's screened up to 9.6 something, wasn't it? 9.708. <laughs> and here it is at 6.59. So that's the, the monthly chart says that the give back in the price has been extensive, but that rally to the upside was also quite extraordinary. So it made a rare peak G with a long-legged doji, took out the, the low of that doji candle from four weeks ago, three weeks ago, plunged under the 14 period moving average. And this says to me, I have no choice but to put a down arrow and say the weekly in uh, natural gas is in a sell mode. It can change. I'm just saying your designation right now. Then the other thing that we're looking at is that within the context of the daily chart, I drew this in a while back when I was doing my analysis. And I we, we hardly ever trade. Occasionally we'll trade natural gas, but we usually don't. UNG would go to. There was a left side, right side price time match that said the, the cluster formation with a doji peak D candle with a potential for a Chapman wave instant restart. I don't want to go into that right now. Uh, says that that D could have an alternate count. And we've seen, I don't know how many times in the last two years, how even in long-term charts, let alone daily charts, this little peak D notation within three bars breaking to a new high turns out to be the restart that takes you to peak A, alternate count F slash B, alternate count G slash B. There's never an H. And there's your D right in this Chapman Wave instant, uh, sorry, this Chapman Wave uh, repellent zone right there above the green closing above the green would be very good closing below the pink not good and here it is now it's in a down channel I love channels I drew channels when I used to do hand chart 
and paper and pencil and ruler back, way back. I've, in fact, I've got the chart right there. I can see it right there. Uh, one of my charts, I've kept it just for fun. In fact, it's, it's like maybe three or four feet high because I had to, the, my engineering paper, I had to glue, I had to tape these pieces of paper together when the charts became a little bit more than they were when I, when I went back in history and re charted from 1920. So the, the, the 19... I think it was 1923 chart just kind of fitted within a three-inch <laughs> span. Of course, in 1987, I had to tape pieces to, to the page to go higher and higher. All right, so left side, right side, price time match. It held the 200-period moving average with the doji candle. It's attempting a rally, but the distance between the nine and, and uh, the nine-period differential in the MACD and the green the nine period green period differential and the 26 period exponential moving average and the histogram is just so great it's going to take a while for na natural gas to hold a rally without keep testing the 6.50 area and at this particular stage the stochastic's flat at eight and the on balance volume is okay it's at about 70 it's quite good actually the, the relative strength right here in the daily chart is not bad so this is saying that we what happens in this chart, if it fails to hit the level, what happens often is that the momentum to the downside is still so strong that it tries to rally and then it just nicks the, the low that was made, it goes under it, and that's where you start to look for maybe a new buy signal. But at this particular point, that peak D says sell mode in the natural gas in the daily, sell mode in the weekly, and just a sell signal at, at this point in the monthly but this is in the area that's very rare. I mean, this is the the, the part uh, with the Ukraine-Russia situation that says it should be rallying. So I'm not ignoring the fact that this 200-period moving average right here with the doji candle couldn't be the, the opportunity for a springboard to the upside, but I'm just saying right now I don't see it. So that's natural gas. I'll just tell you what I will see, that if it goes above 7.213, the 14-period exponential moving average, and holds there, that MACD is going to improve a lot, but not good enough, but it will improve a lot as the casting should get to the 15% in rather than the 18% 8 area. Uh, but the weekly chart says it hasn't, the 9 hasn't closed under the 14, so it's still kind of in play. So I, I suspect this is what we're looking at, and I'm going to draw it out, and let's see if I'm right, that, that heating oil is stuck in a range, but it kind of now it's got limited downside, maybe to the 550 area, but the upside could get stuck under eight. And that's the way I'm looking at it for now, over the next two, two, three weeks. Basil Chapman sitting in for the 11 to 12 hour. Larry Pesavento is usually here for his um, uh, 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 trade what you see in the show. His, his voice is still uh, under the weather, but I hope it's going to be good. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50.
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, and the Dow actually is taking a little bit more of a dive. It is down 170. S&P is down 37. Uh, we have a caller. We have Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike, how are you? Hey, Basil. I'm doing great. Basil, I'm looking at the uh, S&P E-mini futures forward slash yes. ESU 22 on a daily chart. And uh, looking at the two daily candles uh, yesterday's and where today is now, um, do you, I mean, do you think that uh, we've seen the end of this rally, uh, number one? And number two, what are your areas of support where uh, it would be confirmed to you that this rally is over and we're heading back down? Okay, hey, that, very good question. If you don't mind, because I've got the E-mini continuous contract trading at 3864, which is exactly where the uh, uh, ESU is trading. The reason why I've got that is because I've got it in all time frames, daily, weekly, okay. monthly, and I've got it even the 120-minute chart, but I haven't actually notated it on this one. It's worth doing it because it just went above the 120-minute chart and it just smashed in one move down the 120-minute chart to the downside. It is sitting on the 50-period moving average underneath the 200-period moving average. So. Very good question. So there are a couple of things, <coughs> excuse me, that I want to talk about. One is I have um, FIB numbers, and for two days the um, the E mini has gone to the uh, 100. Uh, so 138.2. It went from the Doji candle 132, 138.2 extension to the downside. And it rallied up and it went to the 100% level. Now, you know, going through Fibonacci, I, I don't believe it's an official thing, 50, 100%. I happen to love 300%, uh, but that's not a Fibonacci number. But in the meantime, it is uh, something that I put into, the, into my tabulation. So it went right to that level and reversed for two days now. It touched it and it reversed and that was at 39.41 and we actually went to a high today of 39.50. Trading right now down at 38.64, that's uh, 40 points. Uh, what well, 40 points, that's 90 points. So uh, within that context, the most important things right now, considering the move on Friday, let me just put it this way. In the way I look at the, uh, the way I look at takeoff phases from lows, and one of the reasons why uh, we always try our best for subscribers to my opening calls to try to get the turns at the top and the bottom, because it gives you a cushion. If you look at the long-legged doji that was formed in the E-mini on the um, 22nd of June after the low that was made, and this is the E-mini itself, in the continuous contract, the low of 36.39 on the 17th, that became a bit of a halfway marker, but that extension on Friday, the way it climbed above the 14-period moving average, like the second part of the day, 
mm-hmm. besides being a, a, an incredible short squeeze and new buying, that to me said at least half of what we saw of that entire candle, which in this case would be maybe 50, let's call it 50 points, still extending yesterday and today, says to me that we've become now on the daily basis, we've, we are now getting back to where I normally would have thought it would have been from Friday stalling and then maybe having a bit of a down candle yesterday and an up candle today. That kind of puts it at 38.67. It kind of smooths out all the different things that I would normally look for. Now, I'm going to give it maybe another 20 points to the downside, 38.46 from where we are. And that takes us to to the pink nine period exponential moving average of 38.40. For the nine to cross positive now, it's going to take an even greater bit of strength or bout of strength. And we have to be finding some kind of a low from this moment on at just almost noon on Tuesday into this time tomorrow. Maybe let's call it two o'clock tomorrow afternoon Eastern time. Why? Because today's high still hasn't made a peak A. I'm anticipating that there's an inside candle tomorrow to make that peak A. And unless we actually took out the lower Friday, which was 3761, and I'd probably say on a closing basis, but it's so deep down that I'm just going to say it even has to just nick that low of 3781 at any point in the next two, three days. And I'll, I'll have to say, you know what? Maybe this doesn't. A lot of people say this could last two weeks, maybe uh, three weeks. I've been saying it's price and time that I'm looking at. And the takeoff has been so strong that I'm anticipating based on the um, the shorts, based on what I've read about the number of people that have come out of the market and are not in the market now at all or have gotten a huge portion of their money out. I'm suspecting that we've got more time to the upside that's what I'm suspecting. But I have for subscribers, as you know, I'm, I'm always very tight with my stops, etc. I've loosened them up because we got in at good points. But I'm not prepared. We've had some great gains. We've taken some money off. I'd like to put some money back in. I'm just telling you right now that I, I will be very suspect of the rally if we start to close underneath. Let me do this once again because this is the question that you asked. I want to answer the exact question. 38.40 is the pink nine period exponential moving average. <clears throat> if it goes underneath 3820 at any point in the next week or so, that nine period moving average um, is going to deflect sharply away. I don't really want to mm-hmm. see that because that's going to take more time. So your, your question is, where, where would I consider that it's failing? If it closes under 3840, I'd say, uh-oh, I've got a problem here. That doesn't mean to say that it's got to fail. I'm just saying that's that one would say, uh-oh, it's given back a little too much, and um, it's gone into one-third of the gain. Uh, one-third, yes, it's given back two-thirds of the gain of Friday, and that's more than I would have anticipated. Uh, am I answering your question? Yes, Matt. So, yeah, I, like I said, I just was wondering what your parameters were uh, that would indicate to you that um, the rally is done. So... So I, that, let me just do this. That's on on the um, on this S and P on the Dow. It would be a close below thirty one, a close below thirty one thousand. And of course, uh, that could happen in an eye blink. Says to me, uh oh, you've got your arch formation occurring uh, even smaller than it was from the thirty thousand six thirty five to the thirty three thousand two seventy two gain from the May twentieth low. This is the move that says going to legs C and D, if it's going to happen, has to really expa- ex- expand and go above the Chapman Wave inside track repellent line and really move towards the 32,700s. That's kind of what I would like to see, but I'm also very strict about parameters and it's a really good question. Where would I be cautious enough to say, and, and in fact, if the, if the prices that we're talking about happen, we are still long, and we are long from lower down, so we've still got room. So there could be kind of a sideways. We've got to wait for the Fed tomorrow. Maybe, maybe we don't come back strongly today. Maybe all of a sudden we're looking at we close at the low, and then tomorrow it goes even lower. 
and then we have to wait for 2.30 tomorrow to see whether or not we're going to bounce. But those are the parameters I'd be looking at. I don't know if I'd call it a complete failure, but I'd say I'd be really careful. I hope that answers your question, Mike. Yes, thank you very much, Basil. Thank you for calling. I'll be right back, folks. Dial down once in a while. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Hi, folks, we're back. I'm sure we're all, we're all hoping that Larry gets better real quickly and that by tomorrow he's back. A Basil Chap is sitting for the hour of Larry Pesavento's trade. What you see, <coughs> excuse me, look at the one to one to the downside from that peak D top, that Eiffel Tower pattern. Uh, it's gone just a bit below it. If at any point in the next two and a half hours, let's see, it's 12 o'clock. Yeah, by 2 30 this afternoon, if the E mini is finally trading back into the 3880 or higher area, that's going to be a big deal. That's what you really want to see anywhere from here lower. Not a good sign at all. Uh, so a couple of quick questions we got here. We've got uh, Basil, can you do, um, let's see, can you please check RDBX? RDBX is, RDBX is called, uh, what is it called? It's called, oh, Redbox Entertainment. I thought I recognized the symbol. Yeah, this has made a peak E in the chat wave daily. It's pulling back a peak D in the weekly. It's pulling back at 728. It's got the 200-period the moving average, which is key support. I don't like this pattern. I think it's going to go lower. My suspicion, if it closes under 6.30 in the next week, uh, it's kind of done for this move. It needs very quickly. Uh, the 9 is just crossed below the 14, but the day is young. Let's see what happens. You want, If you're long, if you're short, that's one thing. At $7.26, I don't think you'd be short. But if you're long... You want to see by Friday afternoon or Monday, this coming week, at least a trade. doesn't have to close it, but a trade in the 10.10 10 area. Wow, that's a big ask. Okay, that was a question uh, about SLG, uh, SLG, largest uh, um, landlord in New York. Whoa, this doesn't look good. Uh, SLG is uh, St. Green Realty, trading at 4874 Um Oh, there are a lot. look, look, the MACD rallied and it couldn't actually get a move to the upside is 48.73. No, 
if if you're short, I would stay short. I would have a stop around about uh, 52.64. But if you're long, you want to see 52.64 and you want to see it very quickly. But if this takes out the low of um, 46.64 made just four days ago, wow. Then this is an arch formation, a peak, peak ABC, C1, C2 pullback in the monthly chart. This just doesn't look very good. Question is, Bowsen, is the Dow still in the buy mode? Yes, it is in a buy mode. Uh, that won't change just for the moment. Um, if it starts to close under uh, 30,700, I'm going to have to rethink the whole thing. But I, I just think this is this is the kind of pullback I expected uh, yesterday or even Friday intraday from the high that was made um, at noon. I thought there'd be a rally and then a pullback. Instead, it doubled on the day. So I'm hoping Larry will be back. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And don't forget the Tiger dollar sale. That's a fantastic sale going on right now. All this. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Great programming coming up. And don't forget, uh, we've got Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and Tom O'Brien.